hi guys again welcome to my channel if you're a civil engineer please subscribe to get videos on different topic related to your civil engineering okay so this is the video related to your strength of material and in this video we will discuss about what will happen or how to analyze a body when this is under your stress in all the three perpendicular direction okay up to the last video we have discuss everything related to your 2d now in this video we will discuss what will happen if you apply a stress in this direction let's say this is sigma x let's say this is sigma y and let's say this is sigma z how to analyze this body if i ask you what is the stress in the plane let's say in this plane or the plane which is going along the z axis okay simply isolate this okay this is the plane along the z axis and here you can see in one side your stress sigma x is acting in another side sigma y is acting by the way let assume your sigma x is maximum then comes your sigma y then sigma z so you have already learned how to analyze this system this 2d stress system by using your stress circle okay this is sigma x this is your sigma y then you draw a circle like this okay and if i ask you to find stress anywhere let's say in this plane simply you rotate this radius and then you find the normal stress and shear stress in this plane clear now what about this plane let's say now take this one this is the plane which is going through the x axis so here you can see again the stress is acting in one direction this is sigma z and other direction this is sigma y okay again similarly you can just find the stress is acting on any plane like this one by plotting the stress circle here one stress is sigma y another is sigma z because the condition is sigma x is maximum sigma z is minimum so now your circle become like this okay and again in the similar method you can find the normal stress as well as the shear stress in anywhere in this plane okay now let's say consider a plane let's consider this plane what about this one this is the plane which is going through the y axis okay so here what are the stress if you draw this this is the plane going along the y axis and in one direction your sigma z is acting like this this is the sigma z and in this direction your sigma x is sorry sigma x is acting so again if you draw the stress circle here then this is your sigma x and this is your sigma y so your circle become like this okay so for three cases you can find the stresses in any plane okay and from here you can see that maximum shear stress is acting for this case and this is tau max is equal to your sigma x minus sigma z by 2 clear now what is the change in volume due to this stress system what will be the change in volume in the last video you have learned how to calculate the volume changes when this is under your 2d stress system okay so here in this case how can you calculate the total volume changes due to this 3d stress system let's see again draw this object it something looks like this okay this is one plane draw another plane let's say this one 
this is another plane okay and draw the last one let's say this one okay so this is your coordinate system this is your y this is your x and this is your z so first consider this this plane which is along your x so whenever you are applying any stress this is sigma x this is sigma y and this is your sigma z so due to this sigma x what will happen there will be some strain in this x direction it will come some th somewhere here okay so that sigma sorry epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e and also you have learned what is poisson's ratio due to this poisson's ratio it will contracted laterally why because in this direction the tensile stress is applied and also in this direction the tensile stress is applied so due to sigma y the contraction will be minus mu times sigma y by e similarly for sigma z this is mu times sigma z by e okay now what about the y direction again due to the application of the sigma y this plane or this one let's consider this axis or this side it will increase somewhere here all this also due to all these stresses it will contract it okay so simultaneously the elongation as well as the contraction is being occurred so what is your strain the elongation is sigma y by your e and contraction is minus mu sigma x sorry this is your y this is x e minus mu times sigma z by e and in similar fashion for the direction z you can find the strain epsilon z as sigma z by e minus mu times sigma x by e minus mu times sigma y by e clear so what is the total change in volume this again draw this object this side this side let's say has come somewhere here this side has come somewhere here and also this side let's say has come somewhere here so each side has changed its length so what is the change length let's say it was a it was b it was c now the change length is c dashed a dashed and b dashed what is a dash a dashed is your a into 1 plus epsilon x b dash is your b into 1 plus epsilon y okay sorry this is z because b e b is along your z axis so this is your epsilon z and c dash is c 1 plus epsilon y okay so new volume is your new volume or p dash is your a dash times b dash times c dash clear and it will come as a b c times 1 plus epsilon x 1 plus epsilon y 1 plus epsilon z okay now what is the total change in volume total change is v dash minus v and it will come as a b c 1 minus all these terms it will come here okay and if you simplify or multiply this term it will come as 1 plus sigma epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z we are neglecting all the higher term like epsilon x epsilon y or epsilon y epsilon z or epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z 
we are neglecting all this term clear so you have got the change in volume or v dash minus v as delta v is a b c 1 minus this one 1 plus epsilon x epsilon y plus epsilon z okay and here as this is the first term v dash is the first term we use this one first okay then minus 1 so it is coming as this minus 1 1 1 is cancelled out and you are getting delta v as your a b c times this one clear now let's say all the stresses or your sigma x sigma y or your sigma z all are equal and let's say these are your p when this is happened well in case of hydrostatic pressure you know under water or under any fluid okay the stress is applied on any body is equal in each direction and this is compressive in nature this is known as your hydrostatic pressure okay and let denote it by p as it is compressive in nature we can say here that all these stresses are minus p so in a case of this hydrostatic condition what will happen well you have already calculated that change in volume or volume unit volume change is your epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z and you have also calculated what is epsilon x and what is epsilon y what is epsilon z okay now replace all this trace by minus p what you are getting well first epsilon x well you are getting epsilon x as your minus p by e plus 1 sorry this is minus 1 minus mu minus mu or minus p by e into 1 minus 2 mu similarly in this case also minus p by e into 1 minus 2 mu in this case also minus p by e into 1 minus 2 mu okay so now right here this is coming as minus p by e into 1 minus 2 mu and in all cases the strain is now equal here in all these cases so we can simply multiply this by 3 into 3 so your change is in volume change in volume for unit volume is coming as minus p the stress by e into 3 into 1 minus 2 mu okay what is saying by Hooke's law it's being said that your stress is proportional to your strain okay let's say this stress is your hydrostatic stress that is minus p so the strain here will be change in volume okay so what is the volumetric strain that is your delta p by v okay so if we want to equate all these things we have to write minus p or the hydrostatic stress is equal to constant let's say k times your volumetric strain that is your delta v by p okay so we can write k as your minus p by delta v by p okay you know this e is known as your modulus of elasticity okay and here this k is known as your modulus of elasticity of volume in kel just like your c 
shear stress cases there the g was modulus of elasticity of in shear okay it was about g and for k this is modulus of elasticity of volume okay so you have got that k can be written as hydrostatic pressure divided by volumetric strain and here you have got already in this equation the volumetric strain is equal to hydrostatic pressure by e is equal to 3 times 1 minus 2 mu okay so we can write it as e by 3 times 1 minus 2 mu is equal to minus p by this one okay and again this is equal to your k so we can write k as e by 3 into 1 minus 2 mu okay so this is the relation between your modulus of elasticity e poisson ratio mu and modulus of elasticity of volume k okay in the last video you have learned the relation between e g and mu in this equation and here you have learned the relation between e k and mu